Adrenomatic Excel Carry Over Lead. Brought to you by the Shrimp Troll. to 1975. Game 137, Rockies at Indians. Welcome back, baseball fans. 1972-75, Carryover League. We are back into some interleague work today with the Colorado Rockies at the Cleveland Indians. We're in a game one. Uh, Rockies open their season one and three versus the Mets. Cleveland, what did they do? How did they open up their season? Let me go double check that. The Clevetown Indians, they're three and one. So three and one versus one and three. Cleveland's trying to topple the Tigers in the American League North, a team that went to the World Series a year ago. And the Rockies are trying to climb that big Rocky Mountain to the top of the Mer National League Mountain. Time zone division. We have game one of a best of three. Colorado at Cleveland. You have Ron Reed for the Rockies. He was 11 and 15 in 213 innings with a 393 ERA in 1972. And he will do battle with Gaylord Perry, the magnificent Gaylord's 72 card, 24 game winner with a 192 ERA and 343 innings. There's a World Series ace, but can the rest of the Cleveland team around him rise up to a World Series roster? Well, that's another subject altogether. Rockies Indians, the old James Gang, Joe Walsh concert at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame across the street before the game. Let's get started for the Rockies. It's Phil Gagliano. Two sevens a K. Terry Crowley, 2-9, is a double. Rick Auerbach, 1-8, is single dot dot, and they score a run. Rick Monday, the center fielder, 43, flies the left X. Out in left field for the Indians, it is John Lowenstein, a 3-8. He makes the grab. And with two outs, it is Don Mula, Don Money, 57's a K. But they get a run off of Gaylord at the top of the first. It'll be John Lowenstein leading off. He rolls second base. Duke Sims, 47's a walk. Charlie Spikes, a rookie for the Indians this year. Center X, that's Monday. He's very good, a 25 in center. And with two outs. Boog Pal, acquired from Baltimore in the offseason. 2-4, rolls a short. Top of two. It's Jim Lytle leading off. 39, flies the right. Dave Kingman, 49, second X. Your second baseman is Jack Deadblowhammer, 2E20. And he kicks that ground ball. That's a shame. They brought him in specifically for defense. Kingman's at first. It's Jim Mason. 2-8 is a 6. 4-3 double play. And the Indians get out of that. Bottom half of 2. Veda Pinson. 35. Is a fly ball to right field. Buddy Bell. 64. Flies to right field. And Oscar Gamble. 66. Second X. Your second baseman Auerbach today. Oh boy. 40-39. We shudder. Base hit. Expansion teams usually don't have great defense. They are just trying to find people, let go from other organizations, or left unprotected. Because there's always a roster restriction for that, so some good talent does occasionally get away. Anyway, runner at first, two outs. It's Frank Duffy. 64, flies right. Top of the third. Andy Echebaron, 312, short. Back up top to Phil Gagliano, 35 to walk. Terry Crowley, 6'10", catcher's X. 
The catcher is Duke Sims, a 40 16. Pass ball foul out. The uh, Rockies kind of have a little bit of a Baltimore flavor to them. They've got Terry Crowley. They, uh, well, actually, the Indians have. It's a mix of Orioles in each team. You got Boog Powell, Andy Escher-Baron, and Terry Crowley playing today. Bottom of the third. Nope, sorry. Only two outs. Rick Auerbach has to swing, and he grounds a short. Bottom of the third. It's Jack Deadlow Hammer, 311. Rolls the third. John Lowenstein, 64. Sky's the center. And Duke Sims, 510. Center X. It's Rick Monday again, a 1 5, and he makes the catch. We go to the fourth. Both of these aces for their respective teams are sailing along. Rick Monday, 6 10. Catcher's X. Duke Sims, 4 16. And he survives. If you're going to have the worst defense at a particular position, catcher's on a bad spot. But you can't really reach base unless you get the error. Don Money, 2 8, rolls the third. And Jim Lytle, 66, is a line on the third. One mistake by Gaylord early in this one. Charlie Spikes, 410. Off of the Ron Reed card, it is Homer, 1 of 13, triple the rest. And it just hits off the top of the wall, comes back into the park. Spikes ends up at third base. He's looking at the wall and going, didn't that, didn't that go over? And he's like, nah, it's a triple, dude. So Spikes is at third. And one other thing of fair, they're going to bring the infield up. They don't want to... Runs are going to be precious against Keylord Perry, so... Boog Pal, the infield up, 411. Left X. This is Crowley in left field. Oh, boy, a 4E2. And he catches it, and there'll be a sack fly. Our game is tied. Veda Pinson, 2-9, single. He's a beast stealer still. Must be 100 years old. How about a Buddy Bell hit and run? Let's wake it up a little bit here. Hit and run. There it is, a base hit on the hit and run. Pinson and Bell. You got runners in the corners and one out. You're going to bring the input up again for Oscar Gamble. 59 is a liner to first. With two outs, Frank Duffy. 58 is the sky to center. So Reed pitches out of the hit and run jam. Tie game. 1-1 one, one in the fifth. Not bad. Dave Kingman. 65, center. Jim Mason, 67, is a K. And Andy Echebaron, 47, single one of 12, gets it. Phil Gagliano, 63, second X. It's a 2E20 Brohammer, and he makes the play. We have seen a, uh, a trend we're not crazy about in this interleague stuff. Home teams won every game, folks, so far. Um, it's they're nine and zero, and all the series best of threes have gone three games, home away home, and uh, yeah, with a predictive win loss win scenario. This is game nine, um, or I should say this is game ten, eleven, and twelve. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine and zero, and this is game ten of that. So this is the Rockies are they going to be the first team to get a road win? They got some work to do. Bottom of the fifth. It's Jack Brohammer, 65, pops short. John Lowenstein, 46, 118, lines out on a 20. And Duke Sims, 67, is a base hit. Charlie Spike, 67, is a K. The Indians, just two more batters than the Rockies. 1-1 one, one affair, going to the 6. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, it'll be Terry Crowley. His double and score is the, the offense for the Rockies at this point. 55. Short X. They have a nice infield defense behind Gaylord. Frank Duffy's a 2E19. That was one of the features of this offseason. Was making Buddy Bell, Frank Duffy, and Jack Blowhammer all twos in the infield. Which was a pretty sweet deal for Gaylord Perry. He was pleased. Despite the batting averages of those guys. Rick Auerbach. 1E. Let's take a look at this guy. He drove in the run in the first inning. This is what we're talking about, folks. This is a dictionary definition Colorado Rocky player. 
Are you looking in the extra player sets of any of the four years for a guy who would be unprotected, left off the list of a team? And uh, 74 hour Bach at 342 for the Dodgers, but only 73 at bats. We don't have restrictions for these guys, how many times they can play, because frankly, these expansion teams need all the help they can get just to compete. So, we do occasionally. I did have a Roger Freed rule for 77 when he hit 398 and a Manny Motor rule. That was a uh, limit to three plate appearances in the game, then they would have to exit, and also they could not be designated hitter. So you had to use, use their future defense out in the field. That was my way of perhaps uh, showing a limitation to their pinch hitting abilities as a full-time player. But anyway, Auerbach singles. Don't do that very often, just in 77. And those cards, boy, if you want to get a card set, go get the 77 set, folks. That is a fun season to play. Auerbach at first. Herrick Monday, 512, center X. It is Pinson in center. He's a 3E2 in center. But it is a double off the 3E2 defense. That's a tough break for the Indians. So now they're going to bring the infield up for Don Money, who is an A-bunner. 47, single, 1-12 to 12 off Perry. Rolls a 15. Big break for Perry now. And with two outs, it's Jim Lytle. One, five, let's take a look at Jim Lytle. This is so far the biggest swing in interleague play for a road team. Uh, he was an expo in 73 with a 259 average as a pinch hitter. Probably could have been a DH, but Montreal was in the National League, so he couldn't have been. So one, five is automatically gone, and the road team has a 4-1 lead. Dave Kingman, 311, grounds to short. A disgusted Gaylord Perry. We had a double to extend an inning off Pinson, and then Jim Lytle gets a hold of one. And it's up to these Indians to come back for their star pitcher here. Bottom of the sixth is Boog Powell. 210 single. Veda Pinson, 312, walks. Buddy Bell, 2-3, pops out. Oscar Gamble, 53, right X. You, you can get on this defense if you hit it to the right spot, except for Don Money and Rick Monday. Don't hit, a, hit it there. Hit it everywhere else. In this case, it's right X, and it's Jim Lytle. Don't hit it there either. He's a 2, but he's an E11. And he makes the catch. And with two outs, Frank Duffy. Big moment for Frank. 1-6, rolls to short. Are the Indians going to have enough offense this year? Will that be the case as they try and topple the Tigers? And perhaps maybe it's the Expos who rise up in that division, toppling both the Tigers and the Indians. Top of the seventh inning, it'll be Jim Mason. 3-6 is a base hit. Number nine hitter, Andy Echebaron, 54, center X. This is Pinson again, a three in center. He gets out on the X. Shorthand for this, in case you've been watching this for the first time. The E11 center fielder makes the catch. This result here, if it's got a parentheses, it means it's a reflection of what his E rating was. If it doesn't have a parentheses, it means it's a reflection of what his fielding rating was. So it means an 11 center fielder, a center fielder who makes 11 errors over the course of a season, catches that ball, and Pinson only made two errors. He catches that ball. It's just a quicker way. It's, it speeds the game up for me. Shorter amount of keystrokes. 1-6, Phil Gagliano singles. Two on, one out, Terry Crowley. 39, lines are short, and with two outs, Rick Auerbach, what a day, two, two hits, an RBI and a run score. One three flies to right. Do the Rockies have defense to bring in to help their pitcher? And the answer is no. No, I mean, usually these expansion teams, they don't have a lot of extra stuff. You know, they get enough guys to start games, guys to fill out a bullpen. There are technically guys on the bench, but they're mostly just 
reverse platoon, you know, platoon players. It's hard to get six everyday players for these guys. So you know they usually don't have the luxury of defensive replacements, pinch hitters, that sort of thing. So But point is they have the lead. 4-1 Rockies, bottom of the seventh. Stretch time music. We've been listening to the James Gang Rides Again, 1970. The brilliant the bomber, man, the bomber. Closet Queen. Joe Walsh and Company and the Echoplex Pacemaker, whatever you call that, Univax, Univote, whatever that Echo device he used to put on this guitar, whatever that thing was called. I don't know. Bottom of the seventh. It'll be Jack Blowhammer. By the way, it says John. Let's take a look at his card since I'm talking about him. We haven't looked at many cards today. So it's Jack Blowhammer, but in 72, he went by John, apparently, to the world of Stratomatic. And we got this card because of the two defense at second base. And basically, I just wanted to show you that it says John on this card. That was the only reason I kind of showed you that. So. <laughs> 38, and he gets a base hit to start this rally in the bottom of the seventh. John Lowenstein. 66 is second X. And this is, again, Auerbach, a 40-39. Ouch. What you give, you take away, and it's an error. So he has helped the offense, but he's hurt their defense as he kicks that one. And your tie run is the dangerous Duke Sims. Let's take a look at the Duke. Duke Sims. Boy, what a fine left-handed hitting catcher slash right fielder. Always had high on base percentage. Always had these fun cards. This is with the Tigers in 72. He had 316. Pitch the Duke Sims. 1-6, right on cue. Homer, 1-8, double the rest. It's a two-bagger. Lowenstein will hold a third as they're down three. Content to make it 4-2 to two with the tying runs in scoring position and nobody out. Ron Reed's a starter eight, so he's not going to hit the point of weakness in this inning. And he's chasing a win, and he's got a lead, so he will continue. Charlie Spikes. 2-8, let's take a look at the Charlie Spikes card. 1974. Charlie's best year, really. 22 homers and a 271 batting average. Better against righties and lefties, which is always a boon in this sort of thing. 2-8 is double one of 13. That's your two-run double, and folks, we got a tie ball game. And just like that, Ron Reed is responsible for the uh, run at second base. Potentially can lose this thing now. I look over in this Colorado bullpen, and I'm thinking, I. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, folks. I'm thinking exactly that. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's let Ron Reed figure this thing out if he can. Here's Boog Pal. 65. It's a pop to short. Veda Pinson. 2-6, Veda is a base hit in the center field. Charlie Spikes, the lead run, potentially 14. He's going to run on a 13 with one out, and he's thrown out at the plate. Oh, my. Could have put him on the red light there, but Charlie blew through the stop sign and gets thrown out the plate. Big break for the visiting Rockies. Pinson at first. He's going to take off for second to get in the scoring position with a stolen base attempt, and he makes it. So, they do have a man in scoring position and a 4-4 tie with two outs for Buddy Bell. 2-7 for Buddy's a base hit the left field. Now we're going to send Pinson. He's a 15 runner. 16-17 against the plus one arm of Crowley and he scores! So, the Indians do get the lead in a rather unorthodox way. And it's Oscar Gamble. 1-3, hit by the pitch, and maybe we should think about rescuing Mr. Reed from further damage. Left him in there too long there, just trying to get out of this inning, and just didn't work out. He is, he is your ace. He's your horse. <laughs> um, we'll go to Jim Strickland in the uh, seventh inning. Maybe that streak of road losses is hard to break. Jim Strickland... Seldom used out of the twin bullpen in 72 with just 36 innings, but a 250 earned run average. I'm always very grateful that in this timeline, Stratomatic prints those cards. 
because we have a dangerous shortage of left-handed pitching in the 32-team league. So Jim Strickland will come in and, fr and pay face Frank Duffy. Two outs. 46 is Homer 1 to 2, fly ball the rest, and it's fly ball the rest. But your Indians have a 5 4 lead for Gaylord Perry. Now, can they bring in some defense? And the answer is, yeah, a little bit. More so than the Rockies. Ray Fossey, a 2 with a minus 3 arm, did that with the Oakland A's. But the Indians said, look, let's hold on to this guy. So they hold on to Fossey. He doesn't go to Oakland. He'll take over for Duke Sims. Now you got a minus three arm catcher instead of a plus two arm catcher. That's nice. And that's that. And we'll go to the eighth for Gaylord. A 5-4 lead. Is that enough? He's a starter nine, generally. He'll pitch into the ninth. And the bullpen is more active for the remaining members of the rotation. It'll be Brick Monday leading off. 1-4, sky's the center. Don Money, 65, center. And with two outs. Jim Lytle, base hit. Two outs. Dave Kingman. 2-9 is a K. So really, one really bad swing in this game for Perry. Made this close, 5-4. Strickland continues. Jack Brohammer against the lefty, not very good. 1-8 is a K. Back up top to Lowenstein. Defensively, you want to leave him in there, even though he doesn't hit lefties very well either. 310, this guy's the right. And Ray Fossey, 64, catcher's X. The opposing catcher is Echebaron at 2 e 9 And the inning is over. So buckle up, folks. We go to the ninth inning with Gaylord Perry, their bullpen. If Perry runs into trouble here trying to finish this thing, they have Tom Hilgendorf. He has been elevated to closer, lefty closer, after they lost Steve Mangori in the offseason. You have Tom Buskey, just promoted from the minors. Ray Lamb, a nice swing starter. And they even have Joe Grazenda, signed away from the Blue Jays. A little bit past his prime, though. In the ninth, it'll be Jim Mason leading off. 110 is a base hit. Now, these Rockies... We're built around the home run, so if they can actually just get a hold of one, they can stun the baseball world in the ninth inning. Matter of fact, in an attempt to go for that sort of thing, we've got three cracks at it with pinch hitters here. And I'm going to start with Andy Costco. Andy Costco is going to bat for Echebarren. Let's take a look at this guy. So I'm going for the two-run homer, folks. And this, if you're going to do it, you do it with Andy Costco. Take this card. Hit 280 and 73 as a pinch hitter. Shame he was in the National League. He would have been a brilliant designated hitter in the American League. If he doesn't give the team the lead with the dinger, he'll probably strike out, but he's not going to hit no double play, you would think. So here's the pitch to Andy Costco. 411 is left X. And you got Lowenstein out there as a three left fielder, and he makes the catch. All right, I'm going to go for it again. I'm going to go to another pinch hitter this time. Now it's Joe Liss. Let's take a look at this guy. Yeah, this is the t prototypical Colorado Rocky extra play. I mean, they always get homer walks and strikeouts. We've built this team around power, power, and more power, for better or for worse. A 243 average for the Phillies in 72. Six homers and 140 at-bats. And he probably had some, for those Phillies, he probably had a lot of pinch hits because they were always behind, you would think. And probably had some thrilling home runs of those six he hit. Here's the pitch to Joe Liss. One, four, just misses it and skies the deep center field. And with two outs, it's Terry Crowley. He's got enough homers on his card, but let's look at him. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This team has plenty of power. Some of the best power in, in all of Strat. Not a lot, of, not much else. And here's the pitch to Terry Crowley. 37 is a pop to third. The Rockies gave it their all in an attempt to pull this thing out in the night with some big swings. It just didn't work out. But you gotta like, you gotta like the pinch hitting efforts there. Gaylord does get the complete game. Beats Ron Reed five to four. Game two will be in Colorado, and if they win there, then back 
to Cleveland for Game 3. We'll let you know what happens, so stay tuned. All right, baseball fans, here's the box score of the game you just saw. Cleveland beating Colorado 5-4. to four. Perry, 9 innings, 10 hits, 4 runs. Reed went 6 and 2 thirds. Left him in there too long in the 7th. Just didn't work out for Rockies getting a road win. But Game 2 would have fireworks, we, we thought, or we think. And then we did get some. It's a battle of lefties, not a good sight, as these guys walk a ton of guys and the teams draw a lot of walks. Fritz Peterson versus Sam McDowell, former Cleveland pitcher, now with Colorado. Um, first of all, the Indians walked eight times in the game and the Rockies walked seven times in the game, so we got that. This one, the Indians got a one a run lead in the first on a basis little walk, of course. Don Money, it's a solo homer in the third. We're tied at one. Indians get a 3-1 lead on the two-run homer by Boog Pal. But then for Fritz Peterson, it all collapses in the fifth inning. Single, walk, walk, double, sack fly, single, two-run homer by Don Money again. Then in the sixth inning, Joe Grisenda comes in. Single, 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 walk, sack fly. This thing's over. The Rockies do win at home. Continuing a disturbing trend in these interleague battles where the home team has won 11 straight. So we go back to Cleveland, and are they going to win the rubber match because they're at home? And the answer is, uh, yep. Dick Drago versus Jim Perry. Uh, basically, let me just kind of do the highlight here. So the one run Colorado got was a solo horn by Dave Duncan. Perry gave up 10 other singles. So he got a complete, uh, he won eight innings, 11 hits, one run, got the win. Now Dick Drago was treated poorly, just terribly here. The man's throwing a no-hitter after four. Then in the fifth inning, a leadoff double. Then he gets a strikeout, then he gets a pop-out. Then trying to get out of this inning with a one-hit shutout. Ground ball to Jim Mason, single. Ground ball to Dave Kingman, RBI single. And then John Lowen's done with a three-run homer. So this this whole scoring scenario should not have happened at all. If you have any competent fielding, which the Rockies do not, and Dick Drago is clearly flustered by his lack of defense, his final line, seven innings, five hits, only two, three of those were actually legitimate hits. Should have been seven scoreless innings. A walk in three Ks. Your Cleveland Indians do win the rubber match by a score of 4-1. to one. They are off to a 5-2 and two start. The Rockies are off to a 2-5 and five start. Break up your Cleveland Indians. They win the interleague best of three by the familiar two games to one at, at this point. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.